So once again, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. I really do appreciate it. You know, every single day I come in here and turn on um, the room. I'm, I'm. <laughs> you guys probably think I'm, I'm just giving lip service to this, but honestly, I, I'm always surprised every time, and particularly on Saturday mornings when we come in here and that there's anybody here. Um, you truly honor me and 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 um humble me and i i really appreciate that thank you very much um you guys um are awesome thank you so much for for that so today i want to talk about trends and finding the trend I, and that's kind of a, you know uh, trading 101 i guess and but I want to take it just a little bit further in how we can exploit a trend over and over and over um, as long as that trend stays in play. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, one of the one of the things that I think a lot of folks want is they want to find a very simple, well, I shouldn't say that. They want to find a scan. It may not be so simple that um, points them to just the perfect chart for today. And I can tell you from experience and spending years and years and years wasting time writing code, writing scans, writing all kinds of stuff, multiple, multiple t attempts to write these elaborate scans that are going to bring me the perfect trade in a day that it, it just doesn't work that way. Um, there's just too many variables in the market for that to occur. And when I finally figured out that the easiest thing to do was just work from a watch list. And you guys have heard me reference this before. I referenced it yesterday afternoon that my watch list is kind of like, um, I live in a very rural area, so I kind of see it like my farm. It's from that farm, you know, it's the, the stocks that are in that list are, are my crop and my job is to tend that crop my job is to manage that crop my job is to then harvest the profits that are in that crop and one of the things we we fail on as traders all the time and I'm as I'm I'm as guilty as anyone else at this we get all wound up on what's happening in the day and we we um, tend to race around looking for the flavor of the day, right? The, the thing that's popping today, the, per the perfect trade today, rather than taking the time to really work through the stocks that we know have pretty good option contracts in them. And, and obviously you could trade these as just stock trades too, but we tend to, um, we tend to mess ourselves up because we're always looking for this candle here, right? That's what we're looking for. Oh, we, we need that buy candle. Come on, hurry up and give me that buy candle. I want that right now. Instead of what we should be doing is noticing stuff like this, that this stock is beginning to trend or that it may have changed its trend to trajectory in this chart. Because once we find a stock that is trending, I'm gonna move this list out of the way here. Once we find a stock that is trending, we can exploit that trend over and over and over again. Right? We don't have to, <coughs> oh, excuse me, just a second, guys. <coughs> Sorry, just a quick cough there. I apologize. Um, so we have to, we have to, um, if if we have to work to find the trend. Do you ever wonder why we find a trend and then we trade it maybe once and then we're never back into that stock again? We don't watch it anymore. We're on to something else. We want that next thing that's the flavor of the day. We want that next thing popping up right now. Well, 
what I want to encourage everyone to do is, you know, finding the trend is very, very simple. You guys can use um, uh, very simple scans. You know, um, you can you can use the scan that I, that I do that I just sort a list by, and I just have to click the top of the list and sort it out of stocks that are holding a trend. This this little green line underneath all of those, I know that my 34 EMA has been trending for 20 days. Now that doesn't mean that there's a buy signal there. That doesn't even mean that the stock can't be turning lower. All I'm doing is looking for those stocks that are showing, still showing trend, and I'm not trying to pinpoint the trade of the day. What I'm trying to do is find that stock that is holding into a trend because I wanna trade it over and over and over again. Okay, now I made reference to to the point of Coca-Cola this last year that I've made over $25,000 on Coca-Cola this year. And that's just trading one simple stock and just repeating those trades over and over and over. Once I find the trend, I can t continue to profit from that trend and I don't have to keep chasing around the next stock. Okay, so the first part about finding the trend is we need to, we need to take the time to look at charts. You know, I, I did that class the other day about avoiding the hard right edge. And I apologize, I haven't got that posted yet. Um, a little bit crazy week this week. Um, but, you know, there it is. Oh, and hey guys, I got some good news. I forgot I wanted to do this right at the beginning. Um, got a hold of Rick last. Uh, Rick got a hold of me, actually. He, um, <clears throat> his fever is finally broken. They had a tough time for a few days with a, a fever. Um, if his fever stayed down, stays stayed down all night and everything like that, um, he was going to get out of the hospital tomorrow or today, <laughs> today. Um, sometime today, he may be out of the hospital. Now, he still has to stay close. He can go to his sister-in-law's house and, and hang out there because he has to keep going back for more testing and that kind of stuff. But the hard part, the worst part, he's through it. So <clears throat> he may be out of the hospital later today. And I just thought I would pass that on. How cool is that? So he's gotten through, gotten through the stem cell treatment. He's um, says he's feeling better, oh, so much better than he was a week ago. And he just he, he's been climbing the walls. He wants out. <laughs> he wants out. So I thought I'd pass that along. So when we're looking at charts, one of the things I want to do is I want to just initially avoid looking at the hard right edge. I've made mention of this many times before that one of the things that I do every weekend is I will kick on an index like the diamonds. I will pull up a list of everything that's in that index. And I'm going to go to my naked chart here and I'm going to go to my weekly. And I just start going down through the chart. Now you can see I mark all this stuff up, sometimes over mark stuff up. But I go down this list and I start looking for charts that are beginning trends. Now if you take a look at this right in here on Caterpillar, there's a downtrend. And you can see the result that came from that. Now take a look over here. There's the downtrend. Here's that first rally up. You can see it can be excessive move. They get overexcited. So what do we want to wait for over here? We want to wait and see Caterpillar pull back and rest wherever it has to pull back to, whatever it needs to do to pull back to rest to consolidate that move. And as long as it holds above its downtrend, 
then we will we will see that institutions will begin to add in and support that trend for an upside move okay it happens over and over and over once we get through a selling period like we've we've been through those stocks start to turn back around <clears throat> and this is something i do every weekend i go through a whole bunch of stocks like this and all i'm looking for is i'm looking for those big trends now you can certainly do exactly the same thing <clears throat> with your options watch list right we uh, caterpillar is in this list it, i mean all we have to do is start looking through that list but look at it with a little bit bigger picture view okay to start identifying those big trends now you can also go through that list looking for the smaller trend we can always go back to the daily <coughs> apologize <clears throat> looking for that smaller trend but notice it's very much the same we're, we're breaking out we're holding the trend and then that trend begins and what we want to do is find enough of those charts that we have a good quality watch list of trending stocks, stocks that we can afford. You may look at, at, at Caterpillar and say, I can't afford it. That's fine. Kick it out. You don't need to have it in your list. Don't waste your time with it. But when I take the time to do this, can you guys see how this eliminates that whole idea? We don't have to do a whole lot of fancy scans. We just have to follow a few charts and wait for those trends to, de to develop, right? Wait for those charts to start showing us something that can give us that little bit of edge in a trade. And it happens over and over and over over and over and over either we consolidate or we break from a downtrend and that's what i look for so i'm always going through charts like this and i'm looking for something that's changing something that could be important wba now i gotta tell you this isn't the the most stellar looking chart out there in the world on this weekly but if, if you take a look at this chart, critically look at this chart, have we broken the downtrend and hold, held it as support? We have. And we broke it and held it with the classic W bottom pattern. Do you guys think it's significant now the WB has broken the top of that W. I do, yeah. <clears throat> but see, if we only look for the hard right edge, if we're only scanning for that candle, we're going to miss this trade. We're going to miss this opportunity to maybe catch a stock that finally is done going down, starts to get support of institutions, and it starts moving up. So once you find that on that weekly chart, it's a real simple process to go to the daily, start looking at the pattern, start determining where you might want to get into that trade, right? We have a trend. And we know that this is a pretty darn important breakout here that's occurred. So what we need is to, we don't chase trades, right? Is we want to wait for the next entry into this trade, wherever it may be. And we know that trend is really important. Notice that the stock tends to move off its trend. Like that old saying that I repeat over and over and over, how many times does a trend have to prove itself before we believe it's true? So if we do our job correctly and find these stocks that are starting to trend, then our next job is to put that chart in a list and wait for the next entry into the trade. 
And we all know that we've talked a ton about the 3-8 trap strategy. And we all know with there's plenty of evidence to prove the 3-8 trap strategy works really, really well. As a matter of fact, I got another um, another one from a person um, uh, yesterday that's trading the 3-8 trap strategy, really dug into it. Okay. And this last week on about a dozen trades had had two losers and a break even or something, maybe three lo losers and a break even, but about a dozen trades made almost $900 this last week trading the 3-8 strategy for those really quick wins. So we know it works. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to wait for the next entry into the trade. Do we have to do anything fancy here? Do we have to watch this nonstop? Do we have to, um, um, you know, watch the, these candles wiggle around with this? No, we don't. Daily charts, Carlos, daily charts. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome. So we know this works. And now that we know that we have a trend, that's when we want to zoom up and focus in a little bit more on the current price action. But we never want to forget what brought us to this trade and why we're paying attention to this trade. And that's why you will see when I, I show a chart over here, I commonly have resistance marked out. I commonly have um, gaps marked out. Um, you'll often see that I have downtrend marked out, those kind of things. And I'm watching all of those different levels in the chart. Because even if this chart has to move right up into here first, I don't care. I really don't care. If it moves up here and I've missed this move, no big deal. Because what I know I can do is wait for the next entry into the trade. And if I have a substantial number of stocks in a list that I'm constantly going through that I know have trend, that are showing me breaks of downtrend, isn't it, isn't it amazing? Um, how many times I can draw that line and show you that almost perfectly we break out and hold the hold that downtrend as support. That's still today, after almost 30 years in trading, fascinates me. That that works so well. Just a simple line. A simple line that identifies, hey, this stock is done going down. And it wants to go up. So what I have to do is now I have to start working through the details of this chart, trying to identify where that next entry might be into the trade. I know it's, it is, it's truly amazing, isn't it, Alan? I've shown that, I, I draw that line over and over and over again, and it just, it, it's just, it just works. And now I can begin to start putting together ideas and plans on trades to just follow that trend. And once that trend begins, I want to consistently follow that trend. I know, it's, it's truly remarkable, isn't it, Alan? Technical analysis is fascinating to me. <clears throat> So as we work through all of these details in these charts, and another thing that I think is, it is fun, and one thing I think is really pretty amazing is when you take the time to mark up a chart, that trades will almost, um, when you do that, it'll almost point to the entry signal, won't it? Oh, there it is.
so if we if we build that watch list of trending stocks and you know you could have you could have your option list like this okay and and do what a lot of folks do they go through this watch list at the end of the week and they pick out their candidates for next week not all of these in here are going to be in good quality trends right we know some of these in here aren't even trending. Okay, so there may not be um, a, a huge group of stocks that you really have to watch next week, and and have a list that's your trending your trending list. You keep managing this trending list from your options list. And now you have a good quality list that you're just going through over and over again. Uh, Randy, what I do is I go to the CBOE. Now the CBOE, for some reason, has not posted the latest month, and I don't know why. I don't know if it was holidays. I don't. I don't know if they've had a problem or something along those lines, but. Um, second here there we go um, they I go to the CBOE list let me see if I can get you the link that you can use and here's the thing about the CBOE list um, and anybody that's that's used this <coughs> knows that it doesn't change that much month over month every once in a while you get a, f a few different stocks that pop up into that list but it really doesn't change much the stocks that have good quality options tend to say the stocks that have good quality options and then what I do is I just uh, when you open up that list it opens up in like a um, Excel file and it's automatically sorted by the stocks um, I think it's calls automatically sorted to the calls um, that have the most option volume. And so literally I just copy that list. I just use the control C, control V. I highlight all the symbols, copy the list and post them in the, into Thinkorswim, or excuse me, TC2000. And then I take that same list and I copy and paste it into the LTA scanner. To run my scans against and I know almost all of those stocks have pretty good um, option volume open interest a lot of trading in there that means the bid ask spreads are typically um, narrow yes you can and that's what that's really what I do guys I my list here, let me open open my LTA here for just a second. When um, I'm using LTA, um, the the charts that I'm paying attention to are the charts um, in my in my list. So you'll find there won't be any stock showing up in here. But here's here's one of my scans. It's a the optional three eight trap. And if I show you the details. <clears throat> excuse me of that scan you can see it's using my optionable user defined list and if you don't know how to do that it, it really is simple to create those those lists you can have as many as you want okay so i i open up and put all, all of my stocks in there for my user defined list you could create you know just this week's trending list and have the LTA scanner picking out those trades. You could take your your list um, you could take your optionable list right here sort through your short list put it in the LTA scanner to do it. You could take from this and say, I only want to see those that are trending above the 17 EMA, and it'll find them for you. 
And then you just have to go through those to find those that could be setting up. Okay, so it's, it's so simple to narrow down that list and we don't have to chase everything in the market. So when we're looking at this list, you can see all I'm looking for is I'm looking for the 3A trap and a bolt 17 trend. That's it. I'm looking for it on the daily and I'm looking for a, a, a high. I don't even sort it out by price or anything because my list is already sorted by price. So it is about the most simple scan in the world. And all of the results that we, that we get in the room all the time that I show these trades come from those scans. And it's just, it's just that simple list that I've done the work on and here's the thing that that I think is is really important that everyone needs to under, understand. If you if you have a good quality watch list and you're watching that that list every day, if you're flipping through that list, whether it be in TC2000 or TOS, or You've got LTA scanner doing that flipping through for you, finding those trades. Do you kind of get familiar with how the stock moves? The more you watch and trade a stock over and over and over, the more you get a feel for how it moves. What news events affect it? Like Bob and Baba. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> so if we can take our take our watch list, narrow it down to those trending, we really don't have to chase everything in the market. You know, one of the things that plagues a lot of folks as traders is we t we are rushing so much. We feel like we can't keep up, right? We're just always hurrying, hurrying, hurrying. We can't keep up. We can't look at enough stocks. But in doing that, what we're doing is failing to actually look at the stock. We're looking at the hard right edge. We're not looking at the stock. We're not looking at the patterns that could be developing. We're not looking at what could be happening in this trade. And you can see how I do this. I'm, I'm take my charts back years you'll see the same thing over and over and over I'm focusing on the pattern I'm focusing on the trade and if I can exploit that same trend multiple times I want to do that right I just want to keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that Um, yes, you can. If you go down through a list, you can see I've got the flag right here. And as you go through that list, flag it. And then what you can do, if you know how to use TC2000, is everything that's flagged, you can transfer it to a different list. Or you can sort by the flag. So I could click in here and sort by the flag, and all of the flagged items come to the top. So whatever method you prefer to use, and it makes no difference to me, whatever you think is the most convenient to use, you certainly don't have to do exactly what I do. But you can see if we take the time to look over charts like this, how we can find the big trends. How we can find those stocks that are doing something important. How we can identify big breakouts and know we should be paying attention to this stock because of that trend. And wait for the next entry and just keep repeating the trading of that same trend over and over and over. Now, if you like position trading, it really is a simple process. When you find that trending chart, 
and you're using that longer term, it really is a simple process to identify these really big trends and just ride the entire trend. And when I use the word exploit, I really kind of mean exploit because once we find those trends, <clears throat> you guys may not believe as I believe, <clears throat> that's okay. But what I believe about a stock when it begins a trend like this, it's showing me that institutions are supporting this and continuing to drive it higher, okay? And when I mean exploit, all I'm doing is, is grabbing on and writing with them. That's all I'm doing. Don't have to get fancy with it. Because when an institution decides to move a stock, that it's worth more than what it's priced at, it just keeps going. You never know how long. You just keep going with it. Now you can choose to do it as a daily chart and swing in and out. You can choose to just get in it and stay in it. And ride that trend. I really would like to encourage everybody to have a few longer term holds. You know, start with two or three. And then build up from there. But what you'll find is it's these longer term trends like this. If you can get them, if you can catch them, they're, they will change your account. They'll change your world. When you can enter a trade and just keep making money on it and keep making money on it. <clears throat> okay. And they occur all the time. They're always around us, right? They're around us everywhere, but we don't take the time to find them because we're always zoned in. We're, we're focused in. We're always trying to find this last candle. That's all we want to see. But that's, that's the mistake. That's the mistake that's costing you that opportunity to catch those big long trends and just repeat over and over and over in those trades. Is that making some sense to you guys? Can, can you see how if we just settle down a little bit, if we just calm down a little bit, do a little bit of extra work. It doesn't take a lot of work. Okay. <clears throat> um, Peterson, Mike Peterson, has one, one list that he started with two years ago, over two years ago, from the CBOE. He's never changed his list. He wrote it down and put it in a binder, and every week just flips through that binder looking at the stocks and he creates his short list for the week. Now, if it can be that simple, why aren't we doing it? And believe me guys, I fail on this just like everyone else does. I fail on this because you get caught up, you know, scanners producing all kinds of stuff and, and I'm chasing around too many different things at times when I really should just be focusing on what the chart is showing me, like right here in AXP. Anybody think this could be significant? This is a weekly. Okay, nice long pullback, breaking that. And if I pull this back a little bit further, I want you to just notice that's just the trend. That's all it is. So if we can take this chart, go to a daily, and then start looking for the next entry into this trade, 
Does that make some sense to you guys? How that can produce trades over and over and over. Now, right now, this has been really sloppy in here. What you'll find is when a stock starts to reverse out of that downtrend, it'll go through a little bit of a period of transition, but then it'll start to smooth out. Okay, and we start to smooth these trends out and then we end up with stuff like this that occurs. You know, when we see these charts like Visa that get into these kind of trends and all it was was just identifying big support breakouts. That's something I haven't talked about here yet is the, the big support breakouts in a chart. Those are just as good as downtrend breaks. Okay, if you look for those big resistance areas in charts, and we found one the other day, and it just happened that earnings screwed the whole thing up. Have I mentioned lately that I hate earnings? Um, <laughs> screwed the entire thing up. <clears throat> okay, but there's that big resistance breakout. So we have a stock that's trending, clearly trending, right? Trending up, but it had been trapped underneath this resistance and couldn't move. It popped on earnings, popped on earnings, and now is starting to settle down, consolidate, pull back. What we wanna do is we wanna have this chart on a list. We wanna be watching this chart for the next entry into the trade. And now I can't tell you where it's gonna be and, and that's what everyone wants me to do is, well, where's the next entry gonna be? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't mind the daylight savings time change so much in the winter as they do in the spring. But I know what you're talking about. That time change, it's a, it messes you up, doesn't it? So, you know, keep an eye on those charts. And, and you know, by the way, guys, just because I'm doing, doing charts, or showing charts that are relatively expensive, doesn't necessarily mean that you just have to track um, stocks that are expensive okay you can have a, a watch list of stocks that are fit you much better you know GME take a look at GME five dollars and eighty cents well we can certainly see the break of the downtrend here right the break of the downtrend the hold of the support if I draw this trend down break of the downtrend hold of support Okay, and now we start to see these opportunities that set up in here, and we have to take those opportunities and just play out those trades. Throw it on your 3-8 trap or whatever strategy is that you want to trade, and then get busy trading those patterns. And just exploit it for as long as it's going to go. If you prefer the longer term, take that weekly path, <clears throat> you know, get her done. If you prefer, you know, shorter term, you know, find that trending chart. Let's say you like the hourly. Okay. Get in there, find those trends, get her done. That hourly certainly produced trades, right? Both long and short. Yes, you can certainly use those credit spreads 
Um, to great advantage, honestly, um, when you take a look at the big picture of a trade. Okay. You know, for example, um, I mentioned, I'm going to go back to my naked, I mentioned Disney this week. I I was looking at putting, uh, in fact, I, I went through the whole process. I was looking for I was looking for a credit spread trade here on Friday. I want to put on a credit spread trade in this stock, but I can't do it. Reports on the 7th, credit spread trade wouldn't have enough time to deteriorate, deteriorate <clears throat> for me to put that trade on. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I really hate earnings because they mess up pretty, I mean, really good opportunities in a chart. So now what I have to do with Disney is I have to wait, right? You guys have seen my chart over here where I have this trend marked. I have that support marked in the chart. And I'm waiting now for earnings. For that opportunity, we break those downtrends, we hold the support, and I'm going to start looking for upside moves here in Disney. So that's the fun part about technical analysis to me, is not necessarily chasing around the flavor of the day, but managing a watch list of good quality stocks that are starting to show that show signs of of bullishness and you know I've shown this list a hundred times hundred thousand times not every stock in here is going to be a favorable stock but every once in a while you find something like that okay you find something like this and if you look at the big picture in this trade there's some opportunity that could be setting up here now, it may not be this moment, but if we're patient in this trade, there's that downtrend again. Isn't that amazing? Hold it as support, almost to the tick. And now we start looking in here for support locations. We start looking in here for resistance locations. And we can start laying out a chart that gives us some opportunity once the pattern develops. And I don't have to be, I literally don't have to be chasing around everything. I'm going to take my watch list of good quality stocks. I'm going to pu push it into, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push it into the LTA scanner. Okay. And then I'm going to sit back on my lazy hind end and just wait, let the software do the work. I'm going to set alert on, alerts on charts and I'm going to let the LTA scanner bring me trades. because I've done the work finding the trends. Okay, the trends with quality options, the trends with quality price action, the trends with um, good potential setups, uh, the trends that fit me personally for price. Because it does me no good at all to chase around stocks that I don't intend to trade. You know, you guys see me do this. I, I will share all the time, like uh, stocks, <clears throat> CELG. I will share stocks like this all the time when I see them. They pop up in the scanner in my, my big list. But, and I usually tell you, you know, if anyone's interested in a biotech, there it is. I won't be trading it. It's just one of my rules. I don't trade them. But you guys remember just this last little bit I called this in here, right? And it wasn't me. It was nothing more than seeing the trend and having it in a list. And the LTA scanner pulled it out.
Okay. <clears throat> so if you want to be, let's talk about, because <clears throat> I know there's quite a few folks, you know, exper experimenting and, and doing a little bit more intraday trading. Um, Al, if you go over to the YouTube channel, <clears throat> go to the TC2000 archive or TC2000 uh, TC2000 tutorial playlist. I have an entire video just on working with watch lists, and I set up this exact watch list. Okay. It's already done. You just go watch that video and it'll walk you through. And if you look in the description, it'll give you even the scan codes for all the stuff that I've got here. Okay. So for those of you who are, who are looking more in the short term, you know, you see my list over here. I've got 315 stocks in it. Okay. I'm usually around that 300 level for my, my, my big, my big list. But if you're thinking intraday trading, you need to be thinking smaller list because you get plenty of opportunities with that intraday chart with a smaller list. It doesn't require you to look through as many stocks. What you want to do is you want to go through on that time frame that you're trading. Let's say you're trading a uh, an hourly or a four hour or something like that. What we want to do is we want to go through and find those stocks that are trending, showing us trend. Whether that be up or down, doesn't matter. We want to go through that uh, a list and just create a short list of those that have trend. If you use the LTA scanner, then what I would suggest is once you define that list, load that sucker right over into TC or LTA. And then have LTA do the hard work of, you know, searching those four hour charts for the three eight trap or whatever strategy it is you want to trade, whether it be a moving average crossover or Bollinger Bands or whatever it is. If you want to uh, hike an ashy and showed everyone how to use the hike and ashy scans this last week. <clears throat> okay. So whatever it is that you're looking for, load that over into the LTA on those short-term timeframes and then just have it bring you those trades. If you don't have LTA, then it's just a little bit more labor intensive, right? then you've got to take your short list and you've got to be going through that short list constantly. Okay. As you're going along, particularly when you're trading shorter, the shorter term, the, the fewer stocks you should be looking at. Okay. And it's just a nonstop process. You know, if you're if you're trading 15 minute charts, you don't have time to waste. So as you're going through the list, you're looking for these 15 minute trades. You're popping through here. Oh, there's a short trade. Place an alert or place a, a, a potential order and now move on. OK, and you're just constantly going through looking for those patterns setting up. So you can't have a massively long list. You're going to have a few more if you're going to be trading an hourly chart, a few more than that if you're going to be trading a four hour. OK, but you've got to define that list down to a manageable size list. And then I recommend taking that list, loading it over into the LTA scanner. If you like the pop out of the box at the same time, you can have it looking for a three, eight trap, a pop out of the box, a pullback opportunity. You can have it looking for a bullish engulfing candle. You can have it out of your list. It's scanning all of those all at the same time. And then it brings you the trade. And then all you have to do is look at the chart and see if that's what you're looking for. <clears throat> you 
You know, T, it really doesn't matter. Um, I I chose the 34 EMA because it gives me that bigger trend. You, you know I like to do daily swing trades and position trades, and that 34 EMA is that happy medium fit for me. But it's perfectly acceptable. If, if you say, hey, I'm just going to change that 34 EMA trending 20 days to 17, great. You know, if that works for you, do that. I showed the 17 EMA in here <clears throat> because we are looking for these little quicker trends, right? We're looking for these little quick 3-8 trap potential settings. And I want to make sure that when they occur, I'm not chasing them. And you'll always find that if you get these uh, all three averages coming together, you get some of the best patterns right there. So it, it really all depends on what you're trying to achieve in your chart, in your trading, where you want to take it, okay? But I do know this, that um, everything that I show here is, there's, there's not a single thing in it that's magical. <laughs> There's not a single thing in it that can't be changed to fit you personally. But here's what I suggest, and I always suggest, because I get this question a lot. Well, can you know, okay, I like the 3A trap, but can I use stochastics? I'm sure you can use stochastics, but here's what you have to do. You have to go through enough repetitions to prove that it works. Don't junk up a, a setting, a setup that we know works until you test it and prove that it either helps or makes it worse. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, and, and so <clears throat> the, the trick here, guys, is to find that trend and, and writing, writing a good trend. The trick is to do what I suggested before. Let's take a big picture look and see what stocks are trending. Let's find that first. Let's take the time to not just focus right over here. Oh, well, that, that, that's gotta be a bearish trade. I, I can't watch this chart. And you pull this back and I think that would be foolish to assume. BMY obviously needs some kind of a rest or pullback, but there's no rule out there that says that the trend is over here until the trend is over. We just have to wait for the next entry. So you, if you like BMY, if you can afford it, if it fits you personally, put that sucker in a list. Because when you pull a chart back th like this, pull it back a long ways, and you start defining out what's going on in this chart, Can you guys see there's still upside potential in this? This thing rests for a little while. We could be up here. <clears throat> okay. So start there. <clears throat> start looking at trends with a big picture view Put those trends into a smaller list and either run them through your TC2000, your thinkorswim, or I recommend creating your watch list, throwing it into the LTA scanner and just let the LTA scanner churn through those stocks and bring you the trade. <clears throat> because once we find a trend like this, we can just continue to exploit it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Like Bob C. did in 2017, $138,000 trading 
Baba alone. <clears throat> a much smaller example. <clears throat> Me just trading Coke over and over and over. $25,000 so far this year. I don't have to chase everything in the market. I have to identify trends. And I have to just continue to work that process all the way up. So guys, I hope you got something out of this today. Um, I know it was a little bit <clears throat> um, kind of back to the basics in a way. But sometimes I think we always need that reminder that simple is the best. And if we get a little bit <clears throat> out of our own head and, <clears throat> excuse me, and take our trading back to that simple form, we do better. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, the AT&T trade, um, Robert, I bought this on the weekly chart. <clears throat> Excuse me, frog in my throat. And before, you know, before you holler at me, well, don't you see this is at resistance? I say, I will say yes, I know it's at resistance. I bought this with a January 2021 option. So I'm looking at holding this a long time. And I'm going to be selling calls against this position so i don't normally buy stuff on friday but i bought this on friday because this bullish candle completed um, we broke out from this little consolidation and i do know that we've got to get through this okay but i'm looking for a long-term hold here i'm looking to sell calls against it and if i get an opportunity if AT&T moves on through this, you know that I will be selling calls against this trade. Okay, just bringing additional profit in. I'm not looking for anything to make, <clears throat> you know, greatness out of it. I do know that there's an analyst out there that's put a 60, 60 some dollar target on AT&T. And when I looked at, <clears throat> And I don't know, you know, I don't care what it, I don't care what an analyst says um, so much. I'm going to look at the price pattern of the chart. I know if I can break out of here, I've got a really good opportunity for a big upside move. Okay. Um, can you guys help me out with that? It was in the phone app. I sent out the exact option. Uh, 35 call. Thanks, guys. So choose whether or not that's your kind of trade. Um, I, I can tell you that the options, um, there's huge huge open interest in the January 2021 options. Yep, just a little short of 70 deltas. All right. Everyone have a great weekend. I want to wish you all the best. Thanks for being here.